Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. How do you respond to that, right? There's a thank you, and then some will say, well, Happy Mother's Day also. Hey, we want to welcome also those joining us online as well as those that are in overflow this morning. I know some of you came thinking you were going to be in this room. We're glad you stuck with us in overflow today. I want to show you a picture. This woman is known in my home as Grandma Gigi. She's our daughter's great grandmother. Grandma Gigi has been a spiritual matriarch in Rebecca's family ever since I have known Rebecca. We've been married now 17 years, dated for three, and she has stood out to me as a woman of grace. She is Rebecca's mother's mother. This woman, her smile there on the face was always there, like every time I was around her. If if you're new to church, maybe you haven't heard the word spiritual fruit or the fruit of the Spirit, but the Bible tells us that believers, when they trust in Jesus, are actually filled with the Holy Spirit, and that comes out of them in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I've seen those things in Grandma Gigi for the last 20 years. A week and a half ago, Rebecca's mom let her know that they were going to take Grandma Gigi to the hospital. She had gotten pneumonia a few days prior, and then her dad texted the next day these words, the Lord is taking her. We are all here. We've spent the last week reflecting on and celebrating the life of a matriarch, a woman that God used in Rebecca's life, in her mom's life, in the lives of so many others. Today, we need women like this, right? We need women that would stand out in our culture and encourage their families, and their faith. We've been walking through the book of Daniel, and as I was studying the book of Daniel, looking through the book of Daniel and just prepping for this series, I knew Mother's Day was going to come, but I I couldn't find a relationship in the book of Daniel demonstrated between a child and a mother. I I was looking for that, I didn't find it. So I was planning to do something different than I'm gonna do today. Monday, I said, I'm gonna look one more time. So this Monday, I read through the book of Daniel, and in chapter five, we read a story about a king throwing a crazy party, and it tells us all of his wives are there. And then a queen shows up. And when I saw that, I thought, well, who's the queen if his wives are all there? And as I read the history behind the passage, I was floored to find a mother specific in the book of Daniel that stands out in Babylon. As we need, as we live right now in a culture that that looks on some levels like the, the Babylon of old, We're going to see in chapter 5, so if you have a Bible, we're going to see a queen show up that is the mother of this king, and God is going to use her in this man's life. And so here's what I want to do today. I I want to set the scene for you and I to see what's happening in this chapter, that even if you're new to church, maybe you you've heard the words, the writing that's on the wall, have you heard that before? That, like, that's going to come from this chapter. We're, we're, I want to set the scene of what's going on, and then I want you and I to learn from this queen. And if you're here today and you're a mom, I think it'll apply directly to you, but it, it applies to all of us here today. God needs people like Grandma Gigi in our world today. And we're going to see a queen stand out. 
So in order to honor God's word, I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm not going to have you stand through all of the Bible reading today, but as I read through these first few verses, this is to remind us as we stand that these words came from God. Jan Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. King Belshazzar made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in front of the thousand. Belshazzar, when he tasted the wine, commanded that the vessels of gold and of silver that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the what? The temple in Jerusalem be brought that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought in the golden vessels that had been taken out of the temple of the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank and they praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Pray with me. God, I pray that you'd help us today as we function in a world that needs Grandma Gigi's. That, that needs there to be a light in dark places. God, I pray that you would help us to see in this text what happens. God, show us the scene and, the, and then help us learn from this queen. Uh, what, what's help us to today be different because of your word. God, I pray for the moms here today that they would be encouraged and challenged. And for all of us as we live as lights in your Babylon, God, help us to see. God, Pray for me, if you wouldn't mind. Pray that God's word would be clear through me today. That the Holy Spirit would help me. And God, I pray for your children in this room that you love. Communicate today, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right, I... I want to dig into a little history here because I want you to understand how really cool this story is. If you, if you have been with us, maybe you've noticed in the first four chapters, and we're going to go back to chapter four next week, but in the first four chapters of the book of Daniel, there was a king named who? Nebuchadnezzar. Chapter five, verse one, there's a new king on the scene whose name is Belshazzar. Now, not Bel, I'm adding, I'm making it Daniel's name, Belshazzar. Yeah, Belshazzar. So, Belshazzar, this king, Bible critics, people that would say the Bible's not true and maybe this was made up, they, they would look back on the history of Babylon and say, hey, actually, no, we have record of all the kings in Babylon. There was not a king Belshazzar. So, so the, there's, there's, no, there's no way that this, this story can be taken as true. Belshazzar must, must, must be just something made up. That was for thousands of years. People thought that. They dug up in the 1800s multiple stones in the Babylon, Babylonian area, era. Area, good grief. And on these stones are recorded that the seventh king, which we already knew about in the history of Babylon, there were seven kings, the seventh king in Babylon, a guy by the name of, here's his name, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was a co-ruler with his son. Show a picture real quick of those, those vessels. Th 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 these are two of, we have multiple now stones that record the name of the co-ruler with Nebuchadnezzar whose name was Belshazzar. This Belshazzar was co-ruling with his dad, which is going to be really important when we see that there's a queen. He, he, he is having a big party and in this party, he has all of his wives, it tells us, and his concubines, and they're drinking a lot of wine, and he sends people to get the cutlery from the temple for them to drink out of. And then as they're drinking out of it, having this party, they're praising other gods. Do you think God's happy about this? No. Okay, uh, one other note that I want you to hear as we continue to read the passage 
These words are actually originally written in the Aramaic, but it's same in Hebrew. And here's, here's what's kind of important for you to see, because you might think, well, this would conflict with what we've learned from history. There is one word for father and grandfather. It's the same word. So when we read that Nebuchadnezzar was his father for the Hebrew language and also for the Aramaic, some of you don't even care, but I want you to see that this is, this is really cool the way this plays out. That also could be his grandfather. Make sense? Same word. The only way they could say maybe more than just dad or granddad is if they added to the end of it plural, God of our fathers, and that was pointing back to a long, long time before, many, many generations, like the fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Y'all get that? Okay. So, this man, co-ruler with his dad, is throwing a party. We also know from history his dad had left Babylon for a little while, he was not on the scene, so dad's away, the mice are playing, they're drinking out of God's temple cutlery, verse 5. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Okay. Okay. Just a little bit more here. Ah! Uh, there's no archaeological find that's ever happened in the history of the world to disprove anything we have in our hand. Every archaeological find that has overlapped with Scripture has confirmed what we have in our hand is true. So they have dug up now ancient Babylon, much of it, especially the big houses. The house that they say was the palace, because it was the biggest, has a really big room in it. And that room is 56 foot wide, which is as tall as this room is, and it is 173 foot long, wider than this room is. And the long wall was covered, they know because they've dug it up, with white plaster. So what, 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 what's happening here? There's like a 173 foot big screen for God to do a PowerPoint presentation on <laughs> in this room. And that's what's going to happen, all right? Archaeology tells us this, and, and so did Daniel when he tells the story. There's a finger of a human hand, it appears on the wall, and it writes on the plaster wall of the king's palace opposite the lampstand. The king saw the hand as it wrote. Then the king's color changed. That's an understatement, right? And his thoughts alarmed him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. The king called loudly to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans and the astrologers. The king declared to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and shows me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Uh, let's pick on biblical interpreters here for a second. Bible interpreters for years before they found this writing about him co-ruling with his dad wondered why is why is in this story all of a sudden the reward to be third in the kingdom? Y'all know the other stories, even in the story of Nebuchadnezzar, like he places Daniel at one point as second. The story of Joseph, second. Why third? Well, because there were two rulers. Y'all see? Nab Nabonidus is at two, the third ruler of the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar, or Belsh ah, I'm saying Daniel's given name, they were so similar. Y'all remember in chapter one, Daniel was named Belshazzar. This is Belshazzar. There's one syllable that's pulled out. Belshazzar was actually a female name, was the lady protector of the king. This name is so similar, it was Bel, again, the, that was the king god, king protector, not the lady protector, was greatly alarmed. This king was greatly alarmed, and his, again, his color changed, 
like all the blood runs out of his head and the lords were perplexed okay imagine this moment with us for just a second like imagine you're sitting here in the room and all of a sudden like on the screens of the wall like there's this glowing hand and it writes on the wall of the room like even today in today's world with today's technology that would get your attention right I actually thought about that. I was like, God, hey, it'd be really cool on Sunday if you could just arrange for that to happen. <laughs> because everyone in the room is going to be paying attention, right? And that's what happens in this room. God gets everyone's attention in the midst of this crazy party, and the king is scared to death. And you remember, he cried out with a loud voice. So this is the scene. Now enters the queen. Verse 10. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banqueting hall, and the king, queen excuse me, declared. Okay, who is this queen? All the way back to the early historian Josephus, even before they found all this stuff, finding that he was co-ruling with his dad, said that this queen was his mother this queen enters confidently into the king's court which if you know the story of Esther he needed a, she, she needed a special relationship with this man to just show up on the scene right and that this queen is going to have history that this man does not as if she's been alive longer and knows what was going on in the life of Nebuchadnezzar, his grandpa. How can there be, okay, even in the story, it's told us that his wives were already in the room. How could his wives be in the room and there still be a be co-ruler's wife, co-ruler was dad? Y'all get it? Okay, so here's mom. Some, very few, but some think this may be grandma who was still alive at that time. Either way, this is a a matriarch in the family, all right? So here we go on Mother's Day. I want you to learn with me from this queen. Here she is in the room. O king, live forever. That was the customary greeting when you were with the king in the room. Let not your thoughts alarm you. She's gonna talk like mom. Moms, you worry about what your kids think about, don't you? And this, her son is afraid. Let not your thoughts alarm you or your color change. Sometimes as kids we think, okay, mom, that would be really easy. You're just telling me to do something. What if, well, she's going to help him. Watch what she does. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Nebuchadnezzar had died some 23 years prior to this point. We know because we know when the fall of Babylon happened that this is October 29th, 539 B.C. We know the date of this conversation. She's in the room and she says, hey, th there's a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. The man she's going to talk about is Daniel but I want you to notice as she talks about Daniel she's not pointing to Daniel she's pointing through Daniel to the God that is in Daniel watch what she does there's a man in your kingdom in whom is the Spirit, she's going to bring up the Spirit twice. The Holy Spirit, I believe, had empowered Daniel in a unique way, and she saw that. Of the holy gods. Interestingly, in Aramaic, there's no distinction between God and gods. This could be singular or plural. I believe she's referring to God in the singular 
There's the spirit in him, in Daniel. He is in, re, in direct connection with the God. It says, in the days of your father, same word for grandfather, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods or God were, was found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your grandfather, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and astrologers. Again, she knows. She was around before this guy. Because an excellent spirit. Y'all see, she sees something in him. She's not pointing again to Daniel. She's pointing through Daniel. Because an excellent spirit, knowledge and understanding to interpret dreams, explaining riddles, and solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now, now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Y'all notice what she's doing? This, this matriarch is showing up on the scene. There's a problem And she's going to point to the one who can help. Point through Daniel to the one who can help. That's what she's doing. Uh, Another just, I think, cool note on this passage. Daniel had been given a different Babylonian name. She refers to the name, but that's not who she's calling Daniel. Very few times in the book of Daniel do we actually get to read Daniel's name. Could it be that this queen was a follower of Yahweh and was calling Daniel by his Hebrew name on purpose? Because she knew the God of the Hebrews. It's all over, I think, in her words. What's the point that I want you to take from it? I, as a dad, love my children. And when my children are in need, you know what my first tendency is as a father? My first tendency as a father is to show up and fix it. I will fix it. I want to be the fixer. And so on some level, an un unhealthy way I want to be the hero of my kid's story this queen mother doesn't show up and say hey I'll make everything good she big point here point your children to the one who can help in their hurt in their their trouble in their pain the big idea guys help me on the screen here Point your children to the one who can help. Point your, th- this, this girl, woman, lovely lady, in my 20 years knowing her, would talk and encourage people in her faith, in our faith. She would point us, and I'm going to give you a specific way she did this as we close in a few minutes. You cannot solve the problems that your kids walk through most of them, right, parents? There is someone who can, ultimately. Yahweh, God that loved the world, and he sent his son Jesus to die on, our cro- on the cross in our place. Daniel was in the line of the kings in Jerusalem. It may have been even one of the eventual children, offspring of Daniel, Jesus. Point your children to the one. H- how did she do it? Uh, just real quick make a few notes here she postured herself in humility she she pointed her child the king to the one who could help humbly Uh, notice again the way she addressed him as she walked into the throne room she says to her son O king live forever now my encouragement is not to call your children king and queen like that's not what a but, but sometimes when my kids are having issues, you know what I want to do? I want to go in and say, what were you thinking? 
and, and, and speak down to them instead of like Jesus does with us, the heavenly Father and his love for us does through his word. And he lifts us and he, this like humility is not weakness. She comes into the king's throne room. Oh, king, live forever. She loving, respectfully approaches him. And then, second thing she does, she does it clearly. Uh, she, she, she doesn't just worry about being his friend. I think parents, if you're like me, you want to have close adult friendships with your children. But you're the only parent, mom, dad, gender, whatever, that your kids are going to have. And they need you to clearly point them to the Lord. The third thing that I want to point out here, and I'm pointing it out because actually I don't know that in her life she did it early enough to help him avoid the physical consequences. Babylon is outside. Her husband, history tells us, has already been killed by, not Babylon, the Persians. The Persians have already killed her husband in a war that happened about 50 miles away from Babylon. I don't know if she did this early in their lives, but she's pointing now through Daniel to the one that can help. And I'm thinking, man, I just, it would have been great if, if he could have known that right earlier, right? You know, on, on, on the flip side, as I think about what it looks like for, for parents to do this, like I, I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful that I had a mom I'm so thankful that I'm married to a mom that is intentional about humbly, clearly, and early pointing to Jesus. What does that look like? I mean, in, in my life, in my, my childhood, a lot of times it was just teachable moments. Hey, look at that, God, that bird. God made that bird. Isn't that beautiful? Sometimes it was a family devo. Hey, let's sit down and read. Sometimes it was, you're hurting. Let me pray for you because God can help. Uh, sometimes... It looks different, right? It looks different to each, but, but looking for, constantly looking for ways to point to the one who can help. Uh, I want to flip it on its head for just a second, and then I'm going to come back to this point. If you've had a mom, maybe you didn't, and I'm so sorry, but if you've had a mom or a grandma a grandmom, if, if, if you've had a matriarch in your family that did this, today is the day to praise the mom in your life or the grandma in your life for pointing you to the one that could help. Like this, today is the day. Now, now uh, some of you are not maybe on even speaking terms with your parent. T today is Mother's Day. I mean, it's the day of days to say, hey, thank you, mom. Thank you, mom, for pointing me. If she, if she didn't point you to Jesus, maybe there's other things that you can point to that she helped you with in your childhood or in your adult life. Today's the day to do that. Kids in the room here, students here in the room, when you go home, uh, mom gets to pick where lunch is today, if it's at home or somewhere else, right? You, you get to be the one doing the dishes today or helping out. Well, yeah, you'll know all that stuff, right? And it's an opportunity for us to say, thank you, mom. There's a lot of noise happening down here. I'm not really sure why. Some of y'all are thinking, yeah, that's not going to happen. Is that what you were thinking? They're, they could they can show you the other way. Yeah. Praise your mom. Praise your mom for pointing you humbly, clearly, early. All right, now I want to come back to what, how does that look? Often in a funeral, I think, man, I wish they could be here for this. <laughs> Yeah? Don't, don't wait till your mom's funeral, right, to, to tell her the ways that you've seen God work in her life, right? I, I thought, on, I was like, man, I, I wish Ann could have been there because the, the ministers spoke so beautifully about her in a personal way, in the way they saw the Lord in her life. It was, it was beautiful. But I, I want to point you to a way that she encouraged me and she wasn't even there. And if you're here today, and maybe you didn't have a mom that pointed you to Jesus, I want, I want to use Grandma Gigi to point you in, in a way that was helpful for me this week. In fact, and I think in a very similar way to the Mother Queen. 
in Daniel chapter 5. Uh, Grandma Gigi put her own service together. She was 94. She had planned what v- song she wanted sung and what verses she wanted read. And one of the passages that Grandma Gigi picked was Jesus' words to his disciples before he left in John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, Jesus says these words. He says, do not let your hearts be what? Troubled. Jesus, knowing he was about to leave his followers, and there were a lot of troubled people in the funeral. That's often the case in my heart and in my life. I've been battling some heart trouble recently. Just, I was troubled. And God used Grandma Gigi in her words over us, pointing us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are what? Y'all know this passage, some of you. If it were not so, what I've told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. This, This place where she is, that she was pointing us to. And the the passage goes on to tell us that Jesus said to his disciples, they they ask him, how do we get to that place, like this eternal wait, great Father's house that you're, you're going to prepare a place for us and our hearts are troubled, you are leaving, what's going on? He says, I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I needed to be pointed this week to the hope that we have in Christ. I needed to be reminded this week that there is a God who loves me like I love my children. Y'all know that God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. Mothers, think about this on Mother's Day. God loves you as much as you love your son or your daughter and then some. He gave his only son to come live and suffer in your place so that you and I can be with him in his house. That's how much he loves you. Yesterday morning, uh, Rebecca and I were sitting on the front porch having a conversation. Uh, It it was emotional (laughs) and we started to pray for our daughters. We love our daughters so much. As we're praying for our daughters, like we're crying on our front porch, praying for our daughters. And as we're praying for our daughters, and I'm thinking about how much I love my girls, I started thinking about how much God loves us and how much God loves her. And I was just overwhelmed by, okay, y'all know this, how great the love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. And you know what's happening in me? I'm still experiencing the overflow of a matriarch in the family pointing my heart to the one who can help. Y'all see that? Mothers, grandmothers in the room, thank you, thank you. He's still wanting to. If you've never gotten that, I want you to hear it from her. God loves you so much. He sent his son to die for you so that you can be with him in his father's house. There are many rooms. He's prepared a place for you. Is your heart troubled? He's prepared a place for you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So I want to stop right now and I want to pray. And there's really three steps, which I usually don't have three steps in my prayer. But the first one is, maybe, maybe you've never been told how much God loves you. Maybe you didn't have a mom that walked you there. Or maybe she told you this early, but you didn't follow. And right now in your life, you need to to turn. And you need to go through Jesus. He's the way to this God who loves you. That's why God sent him, because he loves you. And if you want to receive, by grace through faith, the gift, say, God, I believe. There's a real king, a real kingdom. His name's Jesus. And his love and by his grace, he died for me. If that's where you are, just just talk to God for a second. God, thank you for loving me. If you're here today and you're a matriarch, or maybe a patriarch, it applies to both, and God has entrusted you with children that are hurting right now, my question for you is, how can you point them to the one who can help? You may not be able to interpret the writing that's on the wall right now, 
but there is someone who can. So what would that look like for you this week? Would it be, I don't, I don't know, my, my wife two weeks ago sending me Bible verses over and over, pointing me to, what, what does that look like for you? Ask God to show you and then with boldness like this queen, step out and point them. And then finally, for all of us who have living mothers or grandmothers, let's today say thank you. Ask God, how can, how can I do that in a meaningful way? Thank you for joining us today for Worship Online. If you're in our area, we want to invite you to come to physically connect to your local church. We would love to help you to live and love like Jesus alongside of others who are doing the same. If you're from outside of our area, can I challenge you to find a local church in your area that's going to preach the Bible and exalt Jesus? Smash the like button, subscribe, share with friends, and turn on notifications if you'd like to stay up to date with us. And thanks again for joining us.